In this lecture, I'm going to talk about fractures and look at it from not only um, adults, but looking at it from children's perspective and talk about the nursing care of fractures. To give you a little bit of an idea of what fractures are, I think most of you probably already have, have had an experience with a fracture or know somebody that has. So with fractures, we can have closed, um, simple fractures where it just means that the skin is intact. Okay. Uh, open compound, open or what we call compound fractures where uh, the bone uh, comes out of the skin. These patients or these individuals are at higher risk for having an infection uh, as well as other complications because of the, the skin being impaired. Stress, stress or pathological fractures, these occur due to disease, um, malnutrition or weakened bones. People can have spinal fractures and not know it. Uh, breaking of the hips, things like that due to um, the, chronic, the chronic aspects of their disease. Complete versus incomplete. Complete is the entire width of the bone. Um, so you'll hear doctors or you'll hear, hear or see um, reports that will say that on, on them. Unstable versus stable. Unstable means bone are out of alignment. So basically versus stable is when you can, they can see on the x-ray that there is a fracture, but the bones are aligned. Clinical manifestations of a fracture. Pain, okay, loss of function. Uh, is a big one. No, they're not able to move move the limb. Deformity, meaning it, it looks different. Okay, you're going to be able to say if you have ever see a, a true blue fracture, fracture, you're going to know it's fractured uh, because of that deformity. Shortening, a lot of times we'll see this with our hip fractures where there'll be a shortening of the limb. Um, crepitus, think about when you bend down sometimes and pick up um, something off the floor and your knees kind of crack. Um, sounds like your bones are rubbing together or breaking. This is crepitus, so basically bone on bone. Edema or swelling is the other word for edema. And then ecchymosis, which is bruising. Um, fractures can impair mobility be due to the increase in the pain because patients don't want to get up and move when they're in pain. Along with physicians actually prescribing immob immobility based off of the fracture itself. And then it causes balance issues because um, somebody has, a, say, for example, a cast on their leg, they're going to be imbalanced whenever they get up to walk. So that there's a rehabilitative component of fractures that often uh, people have to go through to, to, to gain their um, optimal level of mobility. Emergency care, immobilization, you need to immobilize the joint with um, something to keep it stabilized. We have to maintain perfusion, and how we do this is we evaluate the pulses, the movement, and sensation. A lot of times you'll see it in medical terms called the CSM, the circulation sensation movement. And then we need to prevent infection, meaning covering up open wounds with sterile dressings. Fracture care. Pain control is the big thing. Okay, Pain warrants um, intervention. So we have to administer analgesics such as morphine, uh, Dimerol, things to, to get that acute pain under control. Elevate the extremity and, and uh, apply ice to help reduce swelling. Uh, position changes for, to help with pain and then making sure that with what else, other things that are going to help with pain is wiggling the fingers and the toes is going to improve the circulation. Antibiotic therapy may be indicated for patients that have compound fractures or surgery or, and also surgical repair. Um, they'll put them on an antibiotic for kind of on a preventative measure to uh, keep them from getting that infection. Treatment of fractions, you can have open reduction, internal fixation uh, versus closed reduction. Closed reduction is like, I, I know my brother broke several bones when I was a kid, and they would use weights to, um, you know, try to, re try to reduce or bring those bones back together. Um, once they do that, then they'll cast it with either fiberglass or plastic, I'm sorry, plaster. Open reduction is where they go in and they um, can either do external fixation or internal fixation. External means that they'll go in and surgically repair it, but they will you will see pen sites and screws and things like that on the outside of the skin versus internal. They'll use nailing um, wires and things, but you won't visibly see them. They are actually on the inside of the inside of the skin, um, helping the bone to heal. Traction is something that you will come across. I've come across it up on the neurotrauma floor with students before. Um, the purpose of traction is to stabilize the fracture and to control muscle spasms is a biggie, especially a lot of times older patients come in and they, they're not quite ready for surgery yet, so they want to reduce the pain, which muscle spasms cause, and get the, stable, the fracture stabilized. Okay? 
and so it helps us to helps them helps the doctors to sh ensure that the patient maintains immobility before surgery. Okay, uh, so we can have either manual traction, skin traction, or what we call box traction, balance suspension, or skeletal. And there's pictures in your PowerPoints that show you what these look like. Okay, this one's skin traction. This is balance suspension traction. And I have not seen too much of that. I'm not saying you won't, but a lot of this is stuff that you learn once you get on the floors and you're actually working consistent, consistently in this, in this area. So um, nursing interventions for traction. Biggest thing is we have to maintain positioning and we have to maintain the weights at all times, okay? And a lot of times in order to do this, it's gonna take two of you to assist with turning and repositioning a patient to ensure that the weights are maintained and that that patient doesn't get out of alignment, okay? Um, we have to monitor the, sens the sensation and circulation of the extremity every one to two hours, checking capillary refill, making sure the extremity is warm. Um, we're not seeing any increase in pain or signs of infection and the patient can wiggle their toes. Skin care, again, takes two people, somebody to assist because these people will get skin breakdown if they're laying in the same position. So using a towel or a, a flat pillow that we can elevate and move them 30 degrees is helpful for preventing that skin, skin breakdown. We have to monitor the pen sites for signs of infection. So what would you see here? You would see maybe some warmth, some tenderness, some um, purulent drainage. Serous drainage or clear drainage is typically normal. Um, you know, it's when you have increased pain in those sites and you start to see, um, feel warmth and tenderness to those areas and have that purulent drainage that you need to be a little bit more concerned. Potential complications of immobility and traction. Um, remember, I spoke about immobility before. So pneumonia, based off of, uh, they're not sitting up. They're not expanding their lungs, so they're typical. They're, they're liable to get pneumonia. Uh, bowel issues, remember, gastrointestinal, uh, reduced gastroparesis uh, or peristalsis, so you could end up with constipation. They could have urinary issues from urinary stasis or renal, renal stones or renal um, kidney stones, um, which leads to urinary infections. And then venous thrombosis due to that reduced cardiac output and perfusion from being immobile, which can lead to DVTs or blood clots, or which is why we check uh, perfusion as often as we do. Cast. Um, with immobilization, um, this is how we immobilize injuries while allowing movement of the other body parts. Uh, a lot of times you're, when someone's casted, it's their arm, their leg, their body, and they will use either fiberglass pla or plaster. Plaster is cheaper and more moldable and less expensive. More and more, I'm not seeing too many plaster casts. I'm seeing cat cast. I'm seeing more fiberglass, um, which is comes in a roll and they, they put it in water and it, and it kind of heats up. Um, and it's lighter, it's uh, water resistant, it's stronger and it dries a lot quicker. Okay. Um, with cast care, what you need to do is monitor the five P's every hour for 24 hours and then frequently pain, pallor, pulselessness and paresthesias. Um, we need to place the cast on a soft surface while drying. A lot of times they'll t say in your textbooks to use the palm of your hand when handling a cast, not your fingers, because your fingers can actually pr compress and cause pressure. Um, we need to, mo to monitor, and this isn't all nursing, this is what we're going to teach the person to do, because most people don't always stay in the hospital when they have a cast. So monitor for infection, sm bad smells, warmth, um, maybe right under the area, increased pain, uh, is, is important to monitor when someone has a cast and ensuring that we're teaching the, teaching our clients or patients that not to use sharp objects underneath the cast. You'll see some people say, oh, I took a pen or a, a coat hanger and, and, and used it to scratch that area. No, 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 because what are you going to do if you scratch the area underneath the cast and you can't see it? We're, you know, putting yourself at a risk for infection. So using a hairdryer on cool setting to kind of blow down in that cast might help with some of the itching that the person is, ha is having. I'm going to conclude this presentation here and then I'm going to continue on with the PowerPoints on another, another, um, with another presentation because I, I like to leave my, pre my uh, presentations at 10 to 15 minutes and this one's going to go longer than that. So uh, continue on and I will talk about fracture complications in the next section.